Hello, welcome once again. Uh, discussing about the harness and the wiring, hard wiring over here. Just a pictorial over here. You can see all the wiring. Let's say on the dashboard by the fire by the firewall. You can see so many connectors over here coming from the harness and all this is coming from the fuse panel which is not present at the pictorial but obviously each connector goes to a different module or sensor or accessory a component body controller a vacuum model as you can see for the blower motor so all these is included in the harness now as i said before we're going to take out one day all of this we're going to exchange everything with fiber optic now in sports vehicles high performance they already have fiber optic as you can see with the lights that they have so what choice do you have to do with fiber optic just replace the whole harness so it's not that easy with uh things like that so i just wanted to bring that to your attention because that brings me to the next topic of what we're going to discuss. So let's start with the basics and then we'll go to something that was asked to me a couple of times. So I'm going to address the issue. Okay, first of all, we always know that there's electronic control module, abbreviated as ECM or PCM. We need inputs for him to make a decision. When he makes this decision, he will react upon that decision. So what do you think the inputs would be inputs over here on this side outputs over here on this side this is the output is something that he will control inputs is getting information it's like going to the doctor the doctor asks you what symptoms do you have right coughing wheezing headache right well he's getting that information about air about the crankshaft position sensor to make sure that the, at least that the crankshaft is trying to turn over Obviously, like an express vans and all these GMs and all these, you, you have a crank and no start. And therefore, you need a signal from the crankshaft sensor to turn the fuel pump on, the ignition coil on. It looks for a signal from the crankshaft sensor and also from the camshaft sensor. So, otherwise, you will just have, you will crank and crank and crank until the, ba the battery is just weakened. And then now you say, oh, well, the battery is the problem. No, it's not the battery is the problem. You've been cranking it and cranking it. You've been draining it because there is no fuel. There is no spark and no compression. So we rely on these things. So crankshaft sensor, uh, mass airflow sensor, all giving information about the air, about the fuel, about the, the uh, crankshaft turning, which is a part of the engine, trying to turn over. He makes, he takes all these decisions. You see all these little, yeah, uh, um, circles that's the input the pins or the terminals of the uh computer inside of it is a microprocessor with all the programming and instructions what to do when he receives all this information what should i do should i add fuel should i take away fuel from the fuel injectors it depends on the air like i said the temperature of the air uh how much uh, how much gas how much the pedal, the height of the pedal, how much is the driver pressing the pedal um, on the, on the um, throttle plate position. All these things are determined and they are written as instructions. The output will be the fuel injectors, actuators, solenoids, like I've been saying. He will either increase or decrease the fuel consumption based upon these things. Now, this is just a quick one of this you always, you always need b plus to the computer you always need a ground okay so inputs on this side outputs on this side now this is let's say a pictorial a die a block diagram we call this a block diagram why am i even discussing this because there were several several questions and it's been usually i don't address a, a question unless it's been there a couple of times because then i have to make so many videos but still confused about how, how to start a, a schematic diagram this is a block diagram the other one i just showed you is a pictorial this is a schematic diagram. where to start from where is the starting point there is a misconception out there this is a schematic let's say right you always start from a battery to ground from top to bottom that's a misconception that is not true at all it depends what your purpose is if your purpose is to troubleshoot or to find a component then you know what you got to go to that component for example let's start off simple 
Like um, they asked me in the emails, let's start off simple. I have a bulb, okay? That bulb is out. Here's the schematic for it. This schematic tells me if I take a battery with, from the positive terminal and I put a wire or connection from here to the closed switch and then from the other side of this closed switch, I go to one side of the bulb and then the other side of the bulb goes back to the battery or ground, I can make this bulb glow as you see these things glow. Okay, so let's make it a little easier. As you see the arrows, this, the arrows are going this way, this way. Once this switch is closed and this is in a closed position, I will make this light. Let's say this bulb is out. I go to the car in the morning and I say, oh boy, you ever see that indicator that, that flashes fast and, and uh, it makes that ticking noise, tick, 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 tick. You know one of your bulbs is out, either the front or the rear. And you go in the rear, you say, oh, the bulb is out. I want to make sure it's the bulb. I want to make sure it's not the switch or the wiring or anything. Where am I going to go in the in the schematic right away for my problem? I'm going to go right here to the bulb. Okay? Then once I'm at the bulb, then I'm going to figure out where do I get voltage and where do I get ground. So my starting point is at the component that I have the failure at. I didn't start from the battery, which is the misconception. Once I am here, then I go back and I say, okay, where's the battery? Where's the fuse? Then I come over here. Then I say, okay, how do I get from this point to this point? Then I go through here, through here, through here. So your starting point is here. You're looking for the source, the power source, where it comes from, which is here. So this would be you number one. This would be number two. And then this would be number three the tracing of the wiring. Let's make it a little more complicated, okay? Here are, the, we, we went over this a couple of times. Here is the schematic, okay? As you can see, the top is always the battery or the power source or the fuses. The bottom is always the ground. Again, similar situation, okay? Let's see the reverse lights. Both reverse lights are not working. Where is my starting point? Do I, am I gonna start at the battery, at the fuse? Am I going to start at the ground? No. What am I dealing with? I'm dealing with a problem that I'm looking for. I have a problem with what? Two lights that are out. So my starting point right here, my starting point will be at the bulbs. Now, what do I care about? What do I not care about? I do not care about the wiring. What you're looking for are main components. What do I mean by main components? Wiring does not interest me right now it doesn't interest me the wiring does not interest me what colors it are it is black and pink a uh, stripe doesn't matter to me the connector c314 or doesn't matter to me what it's connected to the splice over here the splice it doesn't matter to me i'm looking for main components as soon as i find this on the schematic a backup light whether a left or right doesn't matter i'm gonna say where is the battery where what's feeding it so i come up here knowing that the battery and the fuses are on top of the schematic then i'm going to look for main components what's a main component a battery symbol a fuse symbol a switch symbol as i sure as we go up we go up we're not worrying about the wiring we're looking for key components sure enough i find the fuse and where does the fuse always be connected to? The battery source. But there is no battery source in this schematic. That's the problem. So what happens? I have to put it into my head that the, this fuse goes to where? The battery. This is why I started the beginning of all those connectors that I showed you. All those connectors go to the fuse panel. Where does the fuse panel go to? It goes to a bus bar, which goes to the battery, the positive of the battery. So, again, let's go over this. Where am I, where is my problem dealing with? I'm, problem, I'm dealing with a light that's out. I go over here, okay? I have to find the source that's feeding it. I don't care about the switch. I'm looking at key components here, here, and here. I find a fuse, uh-huh. A fuse? Let me go back up because I know back up there 
usually there is a power source or a battery. So the, the, the component is here, and the other component that I need is here. Now, I put everything together in between. How does this connect to this? Now, at this point, now I will follow, I will follow the wiring and the connectors and the splices. Now we do it. So one side of the fuse goes to where? The battery, which is not even in the schematic, but it's understood. When it says hot and run, we know it's going to a battery. Where's the other side of this going to? Going to another spliced wire over here, going to connect the C156. We're gonna go this way or automatic, it doesn't really matter. Automatic transmission is in this way. We're gonna go through a switch, another wire, uh, uh, black with pink stripe, and we're gonna come back up here to this one. So, so basically, we go here, let's, here, here, if I'm in an automatic transmission, and then where? Go out here, and then where? Go out here, and then go where? Here, and then go where? We can't stop here. Current cannot stop. Current has to have a full circuit. So where do we go? We go here to a ground wire. And if sure enough, here's the ground. How do we know it's a ground? G. Here's the symbol, and here's G200. So, again, we started off with... Here's the component we're looking for. Let's say we're looking for this component. Both of them are out. This is the left, this is the right. I find the component. I need a, a B plus. I scan around the schematic. I'm not worried about wiring. I scan around for main components. I know I need a fuse or, uh, here it is, here's the fuse, okay? Question is, how does the fuse come from here to here? Now I connect the dots. Same thing, here, here, here here, here, but instead of going of this branch over here, the splice, S is a splice, we have two paths, one this way, and the other one this way, so we're going to take this path, because that's how it connects to this one, are we done here, are we done, no, we still need a ground, going for this one, let's say both of them are out, I think the fuse is the problem, where am I going to start from, the fuse, I'm going to concentrate on looking for a fuse, not the bulbs, Let's say I think it's a ground problem. I think the ground opened up or there's high resistance or corrosion, which is always the case. I'm gonna, I think the ground, and that's why both of them are out. If one of them would be out, it can't be a ground problem because the ground is what? Common to both. So if the, com if the ground is, is bad, both of these will be knocked out. So it makes sense to me to go look for a ground. Okay, let me look for a ground over here. Right? I'm going to look for a ground over here. I'm going to concentrate on looking for a ground. Okay? I'm going to look for the bulbs and say, going up is B+, plus, but going down is ground. So, I find this and this, and I say, should I go up or down? Well, you have to go down, because ground goes down. It's practice and it's dedication, so I hope this, this answered the the questions of all of those uh, comments that I received in those emails, there is no rule. This is the misconception. When I r draw these arrows, what am I drawing? I'm not drawing voltage. I'm drawing what? Current. Current flow. You cannot be successful as a technician in automotive if you just measure voltages. 12 volts here, 0 volts here, 12. It will not work in today's computerized cars. But how, uh, unfortunately, this is how it's taught in school. All they teach is I have power here, power here. First of all, power is not the terminology in automotive. There's not power is watts. We're not dealing with watts. We're dealing with voltage and a current. Current flows to make this glow. Now, where can I put a where can I put a meter, a clamp meter to measure something? Well, you know what? I could take the fuse out and put a current meter in that place. Or I can find a wire for a clamp meter and put the clamp that meter that measures current without breaking the circuit, without taking out a fuse, and measure it over here. If I need, for example, let's say there's no let's say this I, I need 10 amps. 10 amps to flow. Both of these both of these will require 8 amps. Why? 4 amps on each one. 
Let's say I put my current meter here and I only measure four amps. What does that tell you? That tells you, guess what? Only one is lit and the other one is not lit. That tells me there must be an open somewhere because I'm not extracting four other amps. I only have four amps here. I'm supposed to have eight. What happened to the other four? Well, the other four is not being is not being drained from the battery because there's an open somewhere. Can it be a short? Can it be a short that this is shorted? If this would be short, it would blow the fuse. My fuse is not blown, it's intact. So, like I said, you have to be good and everything. Like I said, I started out with all mechanics like everybody else did, just like scan it down and we all started out with mechanical work and all that. But where was the money in? The money is in, in automotive and computer and electronic. That's where more money is and that's why you got to peak at your skill and you got to, once your value goes up, you can determine, you can ask for a good financial agreement. Right? Just like Michael Jordan. He's the best in his sport, right? He can ask for $33 million and he got it, right? Why? His value went up. He proved his worth so much here. If you're good at what you do, not just mechanical, but electrical, you can ask and you can peak and you can ask and you will get that price, I guarantee you. So, anyway, go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematic for Auto. I hope this helped. I hope this relieved the misconceptions that's out that's out there about wiring diagrams, how to read wiring diagrams. You don't start from the, the ground going up here. You don't start from here. You start from basic components, the key component. Look at key components, finding those key components. Let's say I'm looking for, this is a block diagram, right? Let's say I'm looking for the computer, okay, in this block diagram, and I'm looking for the B plus feeding it. Well, Here's the computer. Here's the module, right? I look at this side, key components. Forget about the wiring. Forget about the arrows. Forget about the terminals. I'm looking at key components. Throttle position, that has nothing to do with B+. I look, come over here. Does this have anything to do with B+. Well, the solenoid is getting B+, but it's not feeding directly the ECM. I come over here and bang, here it is. Here's my B+, right here. So this is the terminal that I am dealing with and I am a, a, a need for this troubleshooting problem that I have. So again, scan the area, look at main components and avoid in the beginning wiring and terminals and pins and all that. That's not important. Once you get to the, once you get, for example, Let's say I think the problem is from, is from the switch to here. Now, I worry about the, the wiring diagram, the wiring of it, and the connectors, because there might be an open from here to here to this point. What open? Was it the wire? Was it the connector? Now I'm going to concentrate on this wire, the color of the wire, once because I have to locate that wire, and the connector, the number of that connector, why? Because I have to locate that connector. Only bet bet when you find the two points, the two main components and the, the two points in between them, then you worry about such wiring and things like that. Hard and difficult. It's difficult to explain electronics in a non-technical manner. It is absolutely difficult. I know Scanadana is the best. He is a legend, and I have I've commented to him. He is a legend at what he does. He's absolutely that's why he's a teacher in a school for uh, electronics. He's just the best in, in in electronics that I've seen in in the industry. So you got to give credit where credit is due, and uh, he does a fabulous job, fabulous job at, at explaining uh, schematics and uh, electronics. So please go to my channel, Joe Electron Schematics for Auto. Look at the videos on the hands-on how to put clamp meters, how to measure battery uh, testers, mass airflow sensors. I'll be making much, much more hands-on, but I'm working on a, on a big project. Um, uh, somebody... Gave me that project because they saw the channel and I could not refuse, believe me. But thank you so much.